All right, it's 12.05. Thanks everyone for your patience. I, I feel like that silence is, I should have been playing music beforehand, but thank you all for joining today on this new platform. It's been used for some of the um, well-being webinars we've had this year, but I know it's still difficult to get it set up. So I appreciate the time and energy you spent getting on here early and just joining. So you should have access to audio and video if you want. Um, please feel free to come off mute. This is like for you all to ask questions and to learn more about the culture of health assessment. I think I've been having conversations uh, with many of you and with the health promotion consultants, like at a very high level, like this is coming. Um, so hopefully today you can learn a lot more about the culture of health assessment. And if you have yeah, questions, please feel free to just come off mute at any time. And then you can also put them in the chat, which I think I will see. I also know there's a lot, a few other health promotion consultants on here today who can hopefully answer questions as well. And I will go through fairly slowly and like in a lot of detail. If you're having a walking meeting and you're listening, like I think sometimes I will be reading through a lot of the slides just so you can pick up some of those um, or maybe your ear pings for a certain area, but I'll go through it in a lot of detail. So hopefully you will leave with not too many questions at all. And if you have them, of course, please reach out to me later and I will introduce myself. So my name is Jamie Wise and I work for WebMD and I am the dedicated well-being services program manager. I was here previously with Glymaid um, that used to power Smart Health and a transition to WebMD this year. And so I made that transition as well and have met many of you already. And my role is really supporting each of the health promotion consultants um, here at the state of Washington. So if I haven't met you before, great to meet you love to do a one-on-one -on -one in person in the future. Uh, but for today, we are going to be talking through the culture of health assessment. So first off, what is it? Um, it's essentially looking at your local program culture. So it is used to measure, evaluate, and improve the current well-being at your specific organization. And the results will ultimately help you, us, identify opportunities, uh, measure improvements over time. Hopefully this can be an annual uh, review, prioritize resources, and then just build on strengths that are already happening at your organization. Now I do want to call out here because this has come up, up a few times. Um, this is not an evidence-based tool. Some of you may be familiar with uh, I think CDC has a tool that is very similar in nature. Right now, the scoring with this WebMD specific um, assessment, it's purely for comparative purposes. Uh, it's not based on research metrics. So it's just like a good to know, um, could be really helpful to fill out, kind of locate some of those areas that improvements could be made. And then again, maintain some of the things that you're doing really well already. It was internally created at WebMD in 2014, and then it was updated in 2021. Um, and it was expanded in 2021 to include more remote well-being offerings after the pandemic. So that's a little bit of the history of it, but it has been used at other clients within WebMD as well. And who, oh, who is completing the assessment? Sorry, this is going without me. Um, who is completing the assessment is uh, wellness coordinators or champions or benefit administrator, administrator, someone in HR. Um, it's one person per organization who submits the culture of health assessment. Um, if you would like to assess multiple departments or you have multiple locations that are very different, there is an opportunity to um, fill out one assessment per location, but I think for the most part, most coordinators, most champions, um, it would be one person per organization. And I will dig a little bit into that, um, a little bit more into that later as well. Okay, so again, we're looking at the local 
Oh, it's just going without me here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, again, we're looking at local program culture, you'll get a score, um, and ultimately it's supporting you as well as coordinators. It is going to be implemented August 1st through August 10th. So it's any time between that period of August 1st through August 10th. It should only take you about 20 minutes. It's about 42 questions, I believe. And it will be online via SurveyMonkey. Um, it sounds like most people have access to SurveyMonkey. I know of a few of you who cannot access SurveyMonkey. So in that case, uh, there is a printout that I actually, you can see it. I hopefully you can see it in the top right hand corner of your screen. There should be a materials. It'll be a page with a paper clip. Within there, there's a document that I recommend right now. I think it says download. Download it now so you have it, but that's the whole list of questions. And I will also pull it up um, as well, but you can download that now. You can fill it out, you can highlight it. So if you can't access SurveyMonkey, you can send it to me, your filled out uh, sheet, and then I can fill it out for you. You could also use a personal email address. So there are ways around it if you don't have access to SurveyMonkey, but that is where the assessment lives. And that, link will be sent to you on August 1st. So if you get it on August 1st and you want to do it right away, you can go for it. I'll dig into that one a little bit more too. And then ultimately your, your report will be uh, ready in October. And that will be something where it can be either I just email it to you, to you or your health promotion consultant emails it to you, um, or we can have a one-on-one -on -one and talk through it a bit more. And I will share an example report of what that will look like. And then ultimately, we're hoping for positive change here. Just again, looking at opportunities, um, identifying if you have a net champion network or not. Maybe that's something to um, include. I know some people have been really looking for ways to engage with leadership more. So this could be um, a report that would be something that leaders might be interested in looking at. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of good things that could come out of this. So let's look at the health topics by category then. It's just going fast. Okay, so the first, there's a few different categories here. So we're covering nutrition, physical activity, tobacco, mental health, financial well being, communications, leadership support, champion engagement, social connectedness on-site participation and remote employees. So quite a few different topics and these, each of these will be listed out in the SurveyMonkey and on that PDF. Um, and most will have somewhere from like one to seven questions per topic. Okay. So the steps to complete the culture of health assessment. First, we're going to review the FAQs and the list of assessment questions that I just referred to. And then I do highly recommend answering those questions in advance on your own or with a small group or wellness team. And you can go ahead and just print this out right now if you have access. Um, I will also show you, you could do like highlighting in, um, in the PDF itself. So I am going to get out of this presentation and then bring up the PDF itself so we can go through it in more detail since I have you here and you've set this time aside. So this is the list of assessment questions and FAQs. So of course, I'll show you this later, but there's highlight marks already. We already know the purpose. Um, when and where do we find the culture of health assessment? It will be emailed to you on August 1st with a link um, and those FAQs. You must submit it by August 10th. Um, again, who should complete the culture of health assessment? Probably most of you on the call today. You are the one person um, who would be perfect for filling out the assessment about your organization. One question that has come up already was who to fill out the assessment with. So yes, it couldn't be you on your own. It's about you identifying strengths, uh, you know, like offerings that are at your site already. 
there are some who have thought that doing answering the questions with a wellness group or with their safety team, um, colleagues that you have, that's a great idea if you want to get all together and go through each of these questions. Because sometimes, yeah, maybe you view it one way, but maybe someone else on the team views it a different way. So if you can get kind of that team thought there, that could be a great idea if you do have that opportunity to connect. Right? I know some of you have meetings at certain times of the month. Um, so that can be a good opportunity. So you have the questions today. So if your meeting's coming up, you could uh, set, aside, set aside some time to go through those questions and answer them together. Um, let's see, can you start the assessment and then come back to it at another time? The answer here is no. <laughs> you must complete the assessment in one sitting. So it should only take 20 minutes, especially if you've um, already gone through the questions and you know, know what they are and know what your answers are. Um, but ultimately, you, if you do part of it and think you wanna come back later, it will save it as incomplete. So don't let that be you. Uh, do it all in one sitting and then I'll show you what the link looks like as well. All right, can you go back and change an answer after submitting? Um, no, once it's submitted, you can't change the answers. However, and I'll just pull up the link now, uh, you can go backwards. So I'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is the first page. When you open the SurveyMonkey link, it will ask for your contact information and then your business division department. So for this question, it doesn't specify, I couldn't change it in the SurveyMonkey link, but what you would do here is you'd either write PEB or SEB and then Department of Blank or your organization name. If you're someone who is wanting to fill out two separate assessments for two separate locations, um, this is where I'd want you to just be very specific about so we can differentiate them. So whether it's location one and location two or maybe the city, um, that's where I'd want you to be very specific is right in, in that what site location department do you work at? Okay, so then just to show you, there's, you know, you can select all here. When you push next, hopefully it works. Um, there will be more questions that you will answer. However, if you do want to go back, you can press previous. So if you do want to change any of your responses, please feel free to just go backwards, but do it all in one sitting. Okay. How should I identify my organization? It's in the FAQs if you forget, so you can just look here, PEB or SEB plus your organization name. Um, what if your organization does not provide an offering that's listed on the assessment? Perfectly fine, we expect that to happen. Um, there is space to list any additional offerings or any feedback. There's a text box at the very end of the survey. So you can just, if there's anything that we've missed or anything you want to note, um, please note it there. And then also for many of the questions, if you don't have a certain program or offering, there's usually a box that says not applicable or not offered at our site. All right, what does the score mean to you? you will get a numerical score, but it's less about focusing on what that number is and more about where you can build and find opportunities um, to change over time. Again, the results will be in October. And if you're joining today, there or not joining, if you're watching this as a recording, it will be made available uh, probably by next week, you can find it on the meetings and materials page, if not by August 1st. And then if you have any questions, you can, of course, please reach out to your health promotion consultant, um, or you can email me at jwise at webmd.net. So those are the FAQs, and I will go ahead and scroll down so you can see the list of assessment questions. So it's all in one document here. Again, you can do like the highlighting. I think some people have pro too, which maybe that makes it easier, but you can see that it goes through on-site nutrition, 
on-site physical activity. There's a bunch of different um, questions and re responses here. We've got participation, getting a preview of what these questions look like, mental health. So if you do have questions that come up as I'm scrolling through, please don't hesitate to let me know. Social connectedness, do most employees feel comfortable seeking health support from their leaders, yes or no? Uh, financial well-being, you'll see that some will say on-site and remote. Um, and then some may also have like a click here for a definition. So in this case, I have just typed it out, but you'll see like a link. So it'll tell you specifically what it's asking about when it's talking about financial counseling in this case. Communications for both on-site and remote, checking all that apply. Is there an introduction to the company's well-being program during the new hire training orientation process? I know this is a lot of things that we talk about already with you all um, and that many of you are doing. So it's just capturing what you're doing now. Yeah, Jessica. Can I ask a question? For sure. I guess I'm just a little concerned about the quality of the information that we'll get from this. Um, for example, asking me about the mental health of other employees in the entire school district, um, about whether sure. they feel comfortable or whatever. Like I have, I've like only my experience, I don't know. And so I, I wonder how much value <laughs> my opinion is gonna be when I don't, you know, unless you actually survey everyone how do you know that it's a great point and like i said not an evidence-based tool it's been a tool that's been used with other clients that just helps uh the champions or coordinators just get an idea of like maybe where am i as the coordinator maybe missing things in certain areas so i agree this is like pretty generic and it, you know it, i'll show you what the report looks like as well and then it'll compare your organization to other organizations you won't see the names of other organizations um but I think it, it's maybe more geared to like seeing big picture, like, oh, maybe what am I missing right now? Or like just some, I was talking with someone yesterday and they already had another survey that went out. So like using that survey to think about what employees had already answered and then what you as a coordinator is maybe answering. Um, I think that's maybe one way to look at it as well. But I totally um, think that's a valid point. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have this be a survey that goes out to all the employees and we as a district would just um, basically give the information out. Hey, you know, Seb is having this survey. We can do a wellness assessment and, you know, here's, you know, and just promote that they're doing a survey and it's, you know, their opportunity to weigh in. Um, but if I fill it out, I don't know how much value I'm going to personally get out of it. So anyway, just, and maybe Something. if you did it with a team too, like if a well-being yeah, or safety team or other my colleagues. My team doesn't yeah. meet until October, so ah. um, I was thinking I could do it with them, but you know we don't meet till then. So anyway, just yeah, no, it's a great call out, and I appreciate it. I know um, there are some other organizations that do just like surveys out to their own um, boards or districts or whatever it might be. So it's like put a pin in that for other question because maybe there's other groups yeah. or organizations that are doing because something similar. Currently we don't, and I think we should. That's all my personal opinion. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I think that's a good call out. Okay. Thank you. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah. Thanks for asking it. Are there other questions that are coming up right now? I haven't checked the chat. Oh, I see them coming in. I'm sorry. Um, are we able to get this document review, prepare, et cetera, before August 1st. You can get it right now. If you haven't seen it already, it's up in the right-hand corner, I think, of your screen. Has, have others found it, the materials link with the document, the PDF? It should say, oh, great, I'm seeing thumbs up, perfect. Okay, so it's there so you can download it right now. And I'm probably reading through these late. Okay, jumped in late. Okay, people see it. <laughs> um, but do we have a list? Okay, I think I've answered that question. I'm glad people have seen it. There's the list of questions. Collect input, perfect. Okay, I think I got those. I'm gonna keep going through this so you can just keep looking at 
the questions. Yes, you, the individual, are the only one answering it. Um, and hopefully it'll be over, over time. So annually this can be completed. Champion engagement, if you have one, on-site or remote. Does the Champion Network have meetings on-site or virtual at least quarterly? Then we have remote program offerings at the bottom here to assess well-being offerings for remote employees. Some of them have asterisks. Um, so if you, that means you have to answer it. So you can see that if employees are working remotely, it's a yes or no, but then the ones that concern remote questions, then you just will not have to answer those. We'll just move forward. All right, so quick and easy there. Showed the link. Um, again, in this document then, I have that example of how to list your name, Sever Peb, plus your organization. Completed in one sitting, only should take 20 minutes. There is no option to save and continue. I think I've made that clear, but calling it out. So the results report, what will it look like? Okay. So here is an example report and I'll make it bigger. This is not exactly what your report will look like. It may change. Uh, please don't hold me to this report. It's just an example of what could potentially be on, on it. So first it will show key findings. So what were the strengths? Like what were things that you had identified that are available at your organization? So maybe employees are familiar with their wellness team or committee contact, or you're promoting well-being on a frequent basis. Where are some opportunities? They could be given more access to nutritious food options on site or more tools for stress management. Maybe that's something you have identified in the survey that you don't have currently. Then potentially a culture score here where we would see, again, there's that number that you're getting, which I don't want you to think too much about the number, um, but you could see your score versus potentially on average where others are scoring uh, as a whole. So listing why some locations might have a low culture score. Maybe there are no opportunities for physical activity. Um, maybe you're not commuting, communicating well-being offerings right now. How can we boost that? Or what are some opportunities? Or did you know that we had pre-made communications already that you could send out? And then reasons a location would have a high score, um, having a champion network, some organizations have that, or combined with their safety team, maybe there's well-being activities that are offered quarterly, whatever it might be. So we'll have something like that where it just will show high versus low, year over year, we can see how those numbers change over time, potentially. <laughs> and then potentially looking at score by location, probably not including other organization names, um, but just so you can see where you are ranking in terms of offerings that you have. Uh, looking at different health topics, so all those different topics that I talk through, um, where scores are maybe high versus low in terms of those offerings you currently have. And then looking at the strengths um, in terms of all, again, all those different categories. So maybe you do have strong leadership support. Maybe there are communication things that we want you to continue maintaining because you're doing a great job at them um, based on your understanding of how you filled out this survey, of course. Uh, and then looking at those opportunities. So did you call out that you haven't had any tobacco awareness programs? Um, or that you just haven't shared them widely with the population, or it's something you haven't done recently or in the past year or two years, um, that's where we might just call out those opportunities. Okay. Um, I think I covered, oh, that was just the report, example report, as I said. It will look similar to that. Uh, that will be in October. It will be in a PowerPoint format. And then let's see, I don't have too much left for us, but ultimately we would have just more conversations about how to boost, um, boost your offerings or make sure that we're supporting you in the best ways we can um, and supporting your employees. So I kind of talked about 
the low culture versus high culture score and what we can just think about there. I think it's just probably more of an opportunity for discussion and to, to talk through these results. Again, not an evidence-based uh, survey by any means. Um, something we're definitely looking into as this gains more interest and like I'd love to just see how this comes out and what you all think of it. Uh, I think a lot of this year so far, as many of you know, we've just been trying out new things or um, you know, implementing new custom challenges. And there's so much to explore with WebMD right now. And we're only getting better and better. So I will say I have appreciated everyone's feedback and patience with me. Um, I'll speak for myself in terms of just everything that's been happening with the new program. So I hope you're excited to try it out and see how it goes. Um, but again, the meetings in, or the um, up in the right hand corner, there's the materials that has the download. So download it there, print it out. It will also be sent out August 1st, like I've said. Um, if you do want more support, please just feel free to reach out and like we can get together again, um, answer any questions you have, please feel free to email me. There will also be office hours that I'll hold on August 7th. So between that August 1st through 10th timeframe, if you do want to join to ask one question, great, to fill out the whole thing with me or with others who join, it will be August 7th at noon. It will be a Teams meeting, so you don't have to jump on to go to webinar again. Um, but please feel free to join. I'll be there the whole hour, whether anyone shows up or not. Um, if you do want a calendar invitation, just let me know and I can send that to you as well. All right, so it's about 30 minutes and I think maybe there's one more question. I know that, I know that in the private sector, we would do something similar to this. This helped lower our premiums. Does participation in this help with any of that? I would say no. Is it lowering, would it help lower premiums? No, there's no points for this. It's not a custom activity. It's just purely for informational and discussion purposes, I'd say at this point. It's a good idea though, actually, for a custom activity in the future. So, any other questions? No bad questions. Also, feel free to email me later if you want. But I think that was, I think I covered it all. I think I got the main points out there a few times. So I'll be silent for a little bit here. Okay, maybe a new question. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks for joining today. I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope it doesn't take up too much of your time. And great. Well, I will hang on. I think, I think we're done here. So if you want to jump off, you can, but I will stay on till the end to make sure everyone's question is answered. Or if you want to be in a smaller group and ask a question, I will be here. So thank you all for joining.